Hello and welcome back to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar. In this video, we're looking at question three of language paper one and linked down below is a copy of the extract that we made this question from. The key with this particular video is I want to be able to signal to you exactly how you can fulfill every single bullet point of the mark scheme as listed here and also give you a few phrases that you can use when you attempt this question on your own. So this is the question. And as with all question threes, it tells you you need to think about the whole source. It signals where in the text it comes from. In this case, it's the beginning of the novel. And we're asked how is the text structured to interest you as a reader? The bullet points that you have of how you could signal your writing are not just what you could do, they are what you should do to focus your thinking. And I think it's particularly powerful for you to know that our full march response tries and embeds this very, very well. Here is the full marks model without any annotation on it. I really recommend you reading it for yourself because I never do read it aloud. So hit pause, read it and see whether you can identify the ways in which it meets the mark scheme. So we start off by analysing the effects of the writer's choices of structural features. This is something that is incredibly easy to do if we keep it at the forefront of our mind with a response. You'll note that every single paragraph begins by acknowledging how we are shown something. Braithwaite begins the extract with a first person narrative that at this point Braithwaite then shifts focus to. We're constantly acting as if we're a director. Seeing the structural features from that kind of lens really helps build your response. I think it's also interesting that the ending of every paragraph goes back to the structural features that have been unpacked. Let me draw your attention to the final paragraph. And in those final sentences, it creates a sense of fear and trepidation in the reader. We'll come on to talk about the reader in a moment, but they talk about the effect of the structural features they've identified. Whilst we are now aware of why such detailed cleaning has happened, the fact that our narrator will need to repeat the process highlights this incident is not resolved and thus repeats the sense of uncertainty and unease created in the opening moments. We are going back to the structure at the start when we evaluate the end. There is no denying when we are that clear with the examiner that we thought about the whole text as they've asked and we comment on structural features the whole way through, whether that's first person narrative, the use of dialogue, the use of moving on to another character as a focus. It really signals that level of clarity that impresses an examiner. Next up, selecting a range of judicious examples, or as I like to call them, juicy examples. There is not a huge amount of language analysis going on here. This question is about structure. And we are looking in particular, I really want to draw your attention to the fact they spend a little bit of time in the first paragraph of their response, talking about how there's a dedicated three paragraphs of the text that details the focused and specific cleaning of the bathroom. That's really interesting. That is evidence just to describe that the writer has chosen to spend a substantial amount of the text thinking about one thing is a good example. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that when we're thinking about what good examples are, we're then going to need to think about how we analyse them. It's not enough just to have a few examples, it's what you do with them that really helps you stay in the top band. As we see here, this response is full to the brim with sophisticated and accurate, accurate use of subject terminology, some of which is not impressive, like the use of the word narrator, but it's technical and it's what allows the examiner to see that you actually do understand this is a text and that you're a reader of that text. We learn about the first person narrative, employing withholding within the opening sentence. We're already told about a protagonist. The sense of mystery and suspense is still subject terminology about atmosphere. As you can see, this is not just hinted at in one space. Across the whole response, we are given repeated awareness of how they signal that accurate subject terminology. It's sophisticated because of the way they use language like shifts towards the latter half 
of the extract, as you can see in the second half of the response. They talk about hints of dialogue. They talk about inferences that they're making. Phrases about the quality of dialogue are really interesting when they say these short and terse interactions create a sinister and dangerous tone. It's signalling for us they've noted the tone and atmosphere from the language that's used and they're making that a structural point about questions they have as a reader. What I think really helps guide the sophisticated and accurate use of terminology is that simple structure that we saw with the first bullet point of focusing at the start of the extract and working their way to the end of it. So here are a few things that you might not have gleaned the first time that I really think it's worth us unpacking. The use of short embedded quotations supports structural features identified. It doesn't distract from it. And actually super short quotes really signal well to the examiner that you've been really thoughtful about the evidence you've chosen. The naming of specific emotions and avoiding terms like negative or positive that are far too vague really creates that specificity that shows that you're a sophisticated and perceptive uh, reader and critic. As you'll see, progressing through the source as a whole um, and considering the chronological analysis really helps you see the shifts, the changes and the progression that certainly fuels this really sophisticated, wholehearted response. And finally, explaining how things feel rather than just like vague statements like it makes the reader want to read on gives a really evaluative edge to the response and definitely signals why it's in the top band. Best of luck and I look forward to hearing in the comments how you get on.